this video is the result of two things happening uh, roughly the same time. I had a comment from a viewer called Glyn OC uh, asking about custom vinyl motorbike graphics and a, a book I picked up called Lino Cut Learn in a Weekend by Nick Morley and I thought if I bring these two things together it might be fun. Uh, so I've had a, had a go at making my own Lino Cut style graphic with a motorbike twist. I, it's a motorbike helmet so I don't know if that's if that uh, qualifies it as a motorbike custom graphic but that's what I've done anyway. So inside this book um, is, is basically a crash course on Lino Cut and inside there's some pretty cool kind of petrol vectory type graphics and I just wondered if I could do something like that on Affinity Designer and then make a sticker from it and then I can't do it in this video because I haven't got the gear but the plan is to transfer that sticker onto Lino and then cut out a block print from the sticker design that's what I want to do but not in this video another one Here's a better look at the book. I'll let you just drink in that nice cover for a second. Uh, but this this line art, this kind of thing, is exactly what I want to do, and it would work really well for vinyl cut stickers. So this is a quick crash course on lino cut and everything you need to know by a man who, unlike me, knows exactly what he's doing. And let's just flick through. There's some of this uh, equipment you need. I have nothing. I literally just have the book. I have nothing else. Oh no, I have that. Oh, I have one of those as well. And I've definitely got a wooden spoon. I've seen one of those in the house. But apart from that, I haven't got anything else. Actually, I've got quite a lot of this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm saying is, I need the the, the inks. I need the inks. Uh, obviously, need lino and these tools. And like anything, you can do it cheaply or you can do it properly. And I like to do things properly, so I might have to wait a little while. But um, this is the sort of thing I'm thinking I can do with vinyl. So create the design, cut it in vinyl, stick the vinyl onto the lino, and then cut, cut out directly through the uh, design. That's my plan. So I'll just give you a quick flick through. All sorts of stuff you can do with this. I'm quite excited to get started with it, to be honest, but we shall see. Pretty cool stuff. So, as often is the case with me, I um, drew this without the cameras rolling, and then, of course, now it's, it's turned out better than I thought. I'm not saying it's good, it's just better than I thought it was going to come out for my first go. Um, so there's no record of me doing it, but I will show you quickly how I did it. It is really simple. It's actually over in the pixel persona i just uh, picked up the brush it's just a, a normal a normal is there such a thing as normal a normal brush uh just a round brush nothing special i just drew out uh, my lino block i would strongly advise you do this at high res i think it will have better end results this was just a um it's actually my youtube thumbnail default size so it's, uh, it's 300 dpi, it's not, not very high res. You can see it's all pixelated there. Uh, and then I picked up the eraser tool. Just drop that down a little bit. And then I started to draw out my, my design. So I'm effectively punching a hole inside this block. And then to tidy things up, I just dropped it down a bit more and just uh, start to put nicer edges on things. And if you if you make a mistake, you can obviously you can undo it, but if you if you make a mistake and carry on too far, you can just pick up your brush tool again. Uh, let's just drop that down and just paint back in. This is nice and simple. One thing I've got to remember if I do this on uh, on an actual lino I'm going to have to flip it because uh, the stickers will come out as, as you see on screen, but I think the, the lino will, will be back to front. So bear that in mind, kids. Once you're happy with your design, we're ready to export this as a PNG so we can send it over to Inkscape for the, uh, the next section. But let me just delete this because I don't want to send this over. That would not be cool. Okay. 
So we're going to go up to the three bars and down to export. And then mine is already on PNG. Uh, happy with all the file size and name. Now I've uh, spelt, oh no, I haven't spelt it right. But man, can't spell speed. I'll put sped or something. Uh, then hit OK and um, save it to wherever you want to save it. I use Google Drive and uh, we'll whack it over to Inkscape. Now we've got our image exported as a PNG and opened in Inkscape. Uh, we need to open the bitmap trace tool and we're going to do that by just, if it's, it may already be open on your uh, tabs here. It should be here. If it's not, just go up to path and trace bitmap and that will open up this tab uh, and to generate a preview all you've got to do is click on the image and it will generate a preview. Uh, I'm not going to touch any of these settings, I'm just going to leave them as they are and going to go apply and it won't look like much has happened but what it's actually done is, is create a new layer on top so I'm just going to grab that and move it over to one side and like magic you'll see the original pixelated image on the left and then if I zoom in over here on the right you'll see a nice smooth vector finished product that's done a really good job actually considering I didn't mess around with the settings I think now would be a good time to ask you lot to hit the like button and consider subscribing because that's actually come out really well So the next uh, decision we've got to make is, do we want this black background? If we want just the image, or do we want a bit of this black? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no, we don't want it. Uh, I'm going to give you two options, though. Do you want a, a tidy edge or no edge? The original edge is easy. Just send that over to, if we just go over to the node tool, uh, you'll see all those nodes. That's exactly what um, SignCut Pro 2, when we send the image over to SignCut Pro 2, that is what it's going to cut out for us. I have done a video on SignCut Pro 2. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check out that. I'll keep this video short. I won't go through it here. Um, if you wanted a, a tidy edge, what we could do is pick up a shape tool. Let's draw a square. Let's just cover that up. And then we can hold down. Uh, let's go back to the Move tool. Hold down the Shift button key button um, we've already got the shape selected but we want our image underneath so let's hold down shift pick up that one and then we can go to path intersection and that will chop off everything on the outside and give us a nice square edge or we could go to uh, let's just draw another shape on top of it the boolean operations you need more than one thing to um, to do anything you can't just do it without you need something selected so always put a shape or something over the top let's do the same again let's hold down shift uh, pick up the move tool hold down shift and then we can go to path exclusion yes there we go it's been a little while a bit rusty um, and what we can do then is just go over to the node tool actually you select everything go over to the node tool and then we can delete these. It's going to look a bit woolly. And that's it. We've got our isolated image. So I reckon that's ready to send over to SignCut Pro 2 now. Well, hang on. Before we send it to um, SignCut Pro 2, there's a few bits we've missed out. You lot, no doubt, are asking, hang on a minute. It's gone from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive. What's what's going on there? Doesn't really matter too much because all we're going to do is cut those nodes. It doesn't matter when we print the um, when we cut the sticker because we can weed out the bits we want or don't want. So that's not really going to affect anything for us sticker wise. Uh, and the other vital, importantly, massively important thing is the size. I didn't resize it. So I'm going to just delete this section. Can I delete this one? Yes. And I'm going to bring this over here. And we're going to just go up to the top here. Uh, let's work in old school inches. Make my dad happy. Um, 
how big do we how big do we want this let's lock the aspect ratio i think just so we don't cause ourselves problems with this little thin section here i reckon we go seven by seven actually let's just type that in seven by seven point five perfect right let's send it now you have just watched me resize that image and save it and send it to SignCut Pro 2 and if I just jump back to Inkscape you'll see it's still sat at 7 inches wide by 7.705 high and in SignCut Pro 2 this has happened to me many times it's the first time it's happened on camera I'm very pleased that you get to witness this the size is 10 inches by 9 and this has caused me lots of problems. I don't know why this happens, but please bear with me during these technical difficulties. I will be back. So I've, I've fixed the problem. It's not an elegant solution. Uh, it's not how I've done it in the past. I will usually just shut everything down, restart it, and it seems to, I mean, once you reopen the file, it seems to have fixed itself. But all I've done is copy over the dimensions from Inkscape which is not not great. Where this has caught me out in the past is when I've been doing multiple color um, graphics and I've, I've cut one thing, like a top layer and a base layer, and they, they're completely different sizes. So uh, that's that's as best I can do. Um, it's not, not the solution I was really looking for to help um, you out, but that's what we've got. So uh, we've got our size set, and now I'm going to cut it. Here it is, all cut out. It's worked really, really well. The camera's probably not going to pick it up and still uh, until I start weeding it there is one problem though I know what seven inches looks like and this isn't seven inches this is nine and a half inches so even though I changed it in um, SignCut Pro 2 it still cut what it wanted so that's kind of helped me decide it was it a, an Inkscape problem or a SignCut Pro problem uh, this looks like it's a SignCut Pro problem but I can't spend too much more time on it, so I'm going to weed this anyway and see what we got. Before I uh, do this on Lino, I'm going to have to get on top of this sizing issue, as happened before, as I said. Uh, but I think it, it might be that I, I resized it after I initially saved it. That could be the problem. Uh, oh, and while I remember, don't forget to check out my Affinity Designer Quick Start Guide. I'll uh, leave a link to that in the description as well. Well, what did we learn in today's lesson, children? Dear me, we've got to sort out this uh, sizing issue with Inkscape or Sinker or both of them or whatever it is. Uh, this guy's way too big for the lino to cut. Um, he needs to be about the, half the size of that book cover. Um, a good demonstration though, I'm happy how it, it turned out. It's just not quite what I was looking for uh, size-wise. If you've got any questions, let me know and I'll try and answer them best I can. Um, if you've watched me this far, Thanks so much. You're awesome. It really does mean a lot for the, uh, the channel. And I think that's all I've got for you. So I'll see you in the next one.